My name is Tim, and that's the title of my paper. Um, so at the core of this contribution is a secure aggregation protocol. What we're trying to do is add together a bunch of distributed vectors. We can suppose that um, we have n participants in a federated learning protocol, and they would like to add together their, their n vectors. So we're imagining one vector per, per participant. Um, we also imagine that these vectors have k elements and that k can get very, very large. Um, if we're trying to use a protocol like this for the sake of federated learning, we're trying to aggregate gradients. And um, gradients, as you all know, can be very, very large with millions of potential elements. Um, now, we want to design a protocol to solve this problem. And we want to do that in such a way that all of the input vectors remain private to malicious servers and a malicious server if we choose to use one, and the clients themselves. So at the end of the protocol, um, only the individual who owns each vector should know what that vector is. Um, now this problem has been solved before. The naive solution uses additive homomorphic secret sharing. It has a communication cost of n times k. The state of the art, as cited below, reduces that communication cost to n plus k. Uh, that said, that, that state of the art protocol does have a, a fair concrete or a fair amount of overhead that goes along with it, especially in the case of dropped out parties. So the, the question that we asked is, we want to be doing differentially private analysis anyway. Um, if we assume that our protocol uh, will be differentially private from the get-go, can we use the fact that we're going to be adding noise to the secure aggregation protocol to improve its concrete performance? And we find out that's true if we add the noise to our secure aggregation protocol using the learning with errors problem. Uh, for those of you who don't know, differential privacy is an information, provides an information theoretic guarantee to a mechanism that it doesn't reveal information about an individual. So um, a little bit more specifically, the idea is that if we call a mechanism on two different um, data sets that are only different between, the, that the only difference between the two of them is the data of one individual, the output of that mechanism should be just about the same. Um, and the way that, for the sake of this presentation, there's lots of ways that we can satisfy differential privacy. But for secure aggregation, the way that we're going to do it is with additive noise. So we can imagine that we have a, a query response, um, in this case, the sum of some vectors. And we'd like to make that differentially private. So what we'll do is we're going to add some noise, specifically Gaussian distributed noise. And that will give us a differentially private result. Now, the way that we're going to be adding that noise in this contribution is using the learning with errors problem. So the learning with errors problem is a quantum secure uh, computation problem revolving around some linear algebra. Uh, the setup is as follows. We'll have a public uh, uniformly randomly distributed matrix A, um, the elements of which are going to be finite field elements, um, and uh, a secret vector S, which is relatively short and a, um, a, a non-uniformly distributed small amount of error. And we're going to apply the operations A times S plus E to get ourselves a vector B. Um, and the learning with errors uh, hardness assumption effectively says that uh, if you are given A and you are given B, that we can't find either of these two components in the middle. So um, importantly here, recovering S is difficult. Uh, the reason why this is beneficial for a secure aggregation protocol, such as the one I'm about to present, is that S is very low dimensional, um, and B is not only high dimensional, but it appears to be uniformly random. So the intuition behind this protocol is that we're going to be using B vectors as one-time pads for the very long vectors that we'd like to aggregate with a secure aggregation protocol. Um, then we can uh, pretty much reduce the problem to aggregation of much shorter vectors. Um, and take advantage of the performance gains that come with that. Uh, the protocol in a nutshell is, well, sort of doing what I just said, but um, the way that that's going to work is that clients will use the learning with errors problem to encrypt their vectors, um, and they will send those to a server. Now, the, the protocol, we want it to be secure against a malicious server, at least with respect to confidentiality, so we don't necessarily trust this server. Um, the second thing that's going to happen is the clients will perform a secure multi-party computation protocol that aggregates those low dimensional S vectors. Um, and finally, the server is going to, the server will have the sum after that step two. So they'll take the sum they receive in step two and the encrypted vectors they receive in step one to decrypt the sum of all of the vectors. Um, in a little bit more detail, the way that this is going to work is um, 
the parties will agree on a public matrix that they're all using, so we can assume that every party is using the same matrix A. They will generate their own secret, secret short vectors and their own secret error vectors. Um, then they'll compute the, the LWE problem here to generate a uniformly distributed random vector, which they can use as a one-time pad for their secret input. Given the perfect secrecy of one-time padding, we can now send the secret input to a data curator whom we don't necessarily trust. Um, after doing that, we're going to be performing an, a um, more primitive additive homomorphic secret sharing protocol. So the idea here is that each party is going to have their own secret vector. We'd like to aggregate all of those, and we can use some sort of protocol for that. Uh, for the sake of our experiments, what we do is um, use a protocol based on um, uh, packed secret sharing. Um, so the pack Shamir secret sharing, it's a relatively primitive protocol, but ultimately it's going to give us the sum of the S vectors that we can send to our data curator. Um, and then finally, now the data curator will have everything it needs to perform decryption. What we can do is they will sum, they will sum their massed vectors together um, and subtract from that the public matrix A times the sum of the S vectors. Um, and in doing so, we pretty much cancel out the, the blue and red parts of this protocol and end up with the sum of the secret inputs plus the sum of the error term. Now, I mentioned that the error term is going to be used to satisfy differential privacy. Um, the way that we can go about doing this is by drawing the noise from a Gaussian distribution, relying on the fact that the sum of Gaussian distributed random variables is also a Gaussian distributed random variable. So as long as we ensure that the honest parties are um, using Gaussian noise for their, for their learning with errors error term, then we can parameterize that in such a way that the sum of all of those vectors um, adds up to Gaussian distributed noise for the Gaussian mechanism in differential privacy. Um, that's the, the description of the protocol in a nutshell. For the sake of evaluation, we evaluate the communication and computation complexity. Uh, we do a theoretical or a, a analytical analysis in the paper. What we find is that the, the um, the, the growth is pretty much the same as what you'd see in the previous state of the art. So for here, I'm going to focus on uh, concrete performance. For the sake of communication, we look at the expansion factor of our protocol. Now, what that means is just how much more communication this protocol is going to require uh, when compared to using a trusted third party to perform secure aggregation. So we can assume that we need to send our vector, that every party is going to need to send their vector somewhere. This metric is pretty much how much more um, communication does each party need to do uh, beyond just doing that. And what we find is that um, our expansion factor is nearly optimal, and it demonstrates that we have very little overhead in this protocol. The reason why our expansion factor is hovering around 1.6 and largely dependent on the number of clients that we have in our protocol rather than the vector size has to do with the fact that for any secure multi-party computation-based solution to this problem, you need to encode your vectors as finite field elements. Um, I can also point out that we have lower expansion factor here and therefore less communication cost than the previous state of the art. In terms of computation performance analysis, what we do is um, we, we simulated the protocol both on the client side and on the server side, and then just you know calculated how long each each bit of communicate each bit of computation took. And we also find that the protocol performs very very well here. So uh, regardless of vector size, for the sake of client, it's taking less than a third of a second to execute this protocol. Um, and we see that the growth of protocol of client time. Uh, happens linearly with the size of the vector, which I think we're, we're hoping for. That's the same behavior as you would see in the ideal functionality. Um, on the server side, we see uh, similarly, similarly fast performance. Uh, for all configurations that we tested, we're looking at less than 10 seconds of, um, less than 10 seconds of server runtime, though these results are stratified by whether or not we expect participants to be dropping out. Uh, we can recover from dropouts using this protocol. Um, the way that happens is, is um, involving the primitive uh, secure aggregation protocol that we use for the S vectors. Um, and that 
slowdown happens on the server side. But nevertheless, in all configurations tested, we're still looking at less than 10 seconds of aggregation time. Uh, and compared to the state of the art, we're looking at nearly an order of magnitude improvement um, for 30% dropouts, 500 clients, and vectors of 100,000 elements. The previous state of the art has um, about a second of client runtime and 143 seconds of server time. Um, I think that concludes what I have to say on the protocol, and I'm happy to take questions now.